Hello, everyone. Can you guys please stand up? This is our first day of week of worship. I'm super excited to be with you guys. And this is our theme song for today. So please sing it out if you know it. And if you don't, that's okay. We're going to learn it along the week. Let's start. When did I, when did I start to forget All of the great things you did When did I throw away the hate for the impossible How did I start to believe You weren't sufficient for why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You do miracles. You are more than able. Still, because. 
because we love you. God is more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? This next song is one of my favorites. I picked an older song because lately I haven't really been singing a lot of older songs, but I really enjoy this one. So please sing this with me. (laughs) When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply call. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back sing that i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Can you guys please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day where we can all kind of come together and kind of rejoice with you. Um, Please let us just all get together and praise your name. That's all that really matters. We just want to have a closer relationship with you, Lord. Um, I always seem to drift away from you, Lord, and then come back to you and drift away. But please, Lord, bring me close to you. Bring us all close to you. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And Please bless the speaker that's going to speak. Please use her as an instrument. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, PUC.
That sounded really sad. Good morning, PUC. That's a little bit better. I want to welcome you to the first day of week of worship. Um, honestly, this is probably my favorite time in the quarter because I know God has an incredible blessing for all of us, and I hope that you guys enjoy the program and feel welcome. So, yeah. Good morning. I started to say happy Sabbath, but it's not Sabbath. It seems like I should say that when I'm up here, right? It just kind of feels that way. So um, I'm Sandy Ringer. I teach in the nursing department. And this last March spring break that we just had, I went to Fiji. And it was a phenomenal experience. And we're here to share with you about our Fiji mission trip. And it's kind of, it has some different elements to it. Um, many of you, I'm sure, saw it advertised on Canvas. And right now, we've got several mission trips that are coming up here in the future. Um, but anyway, you can go to the next slide, please. So we had a group of 15 PUC students that went along with us. 12 were BSN students, and they went along to get their clinical hours in. So that seems like, okay, great. They were trying to, you know, take a class. Um, but the other aspect of this was they were trying to help the people of Fiji. We went to a small island called Mana, and they have no health care there at all. There is a nurse that's kind of part-time at one of the resorts, and that's all they have. And so we had the opportunity to bring a group of physicians, as you can see. Um, there was some of the faculty members, Professor Piber and myself. Um, Professor Hayes was there. And we went and um, brought health care to these people of Mana. We can go to the next picture, please. And you can just rotate through some of these. Um, that was as we were beginning to leave. So um, today, I just have a couple questions. So Madison went along with us as a non-nursing student. Um, there's opportunities in the future for this to be through biology also, not just nursing, to where you could um, get some classwork done with that. But Madison, what made you decide to join our Fiji mission trip this year? Well, I'm not like a big fan of missionary trips. I used to think that they were kind of unuseful. And when I saw how uh, Mana Island had 500 people and we were just going to go and um, be a light to them, we actually got them light. Um, they had a, their, almost their island is completely dark at night. But um, with uh, Survivor, the, place, the, the people that we were working with, we were able to get funds so that they could get a, um, a light. Uh, was it a solar panel? It was a solar panel. And um, we were there just serving the community and I didn't even think that like it would have an impact on me that working with these with these people would be so beneficial to my career path. I'm a social work major and um, working with people kind of fuels the fire for why I went into my career and why I'm pursuing this. So it, it like it, it was just a blessing to work with people in a different setting than here. Totally. Thank you. Um, so, Professor Pubert, what was it like, we got to go visit in their homes of these people in Fiji. What was it like when you went into their homes? What, 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 what did it look like? What, what, how were they living? Sure. Um, a lot of them, as primitive as the setting was where there were living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, it was just one big room that housed everything that they owned but it was very clean, and that's one thing that I noticed. As poor or as impoverished as a person can be, cleanliness was one of their key thing, which was important to their health as well. But the sad thing is, they, as bad as it is that they couldn't get the health care on the island, even when we came, they couldn't get to us, some of them. And it's a small place because they couldn't walk or they had some debilitating um, problem. And us going to them showed them how much we really cared for their health and that mattered to them. So the environment was clean and they were so receptive and so filled with appreciation for us being there. That was so wonderful to see. So uh, I'm going to ask you, Professor Pierre, how what impact do you feel like it had on our nursing students to go on this trip? Oh my, it had such a huge impact. I saw students crying like almost every day. <laughs> um, but I just saw how they were able to connect, you know, your class with the community health. But with um, they mentioned the spirituality. They mentioned, you know, the the feeling that they felt that they were 
making a difference. Because as nurses, sometimes, you know, we know what we're there for, but we, we don't always see it right away. But they were able to see that impact right away sometimes. Thank you. So one part of the story I'd love to share with you, our first day that we were there, we didn't have a lot of people come and we thought, oh, this is so discouraging. And so day two, we were like, um, you know, I wonder what's going on. And we, we got word that there was a local healer on the island. There's only 500 people granted, but this local healer was telling everyone not to come and see our doctors and our nurses because it would hurt them and it would make them worse. So we started praying and as a group and said, okay, Lord, you need to send these people here because you know that they need this health care. And so we did. And the next day, then Professor Pivera took a group of nursing students into the community. And by that night, they just started flooding in. And so after we kind of broke the ice with them, we had 98 people one day and 80, actually it was 107 after I actually did my count. And in the 90s, the second or third day, fourth day, and it, and it just continued. And and it was fun to see the attitudes and the ice kind of melt with the people. And that was really awesome. So I know I'm running out of time here, but Madison, one more question. What personal benefit did you gain from this trip? And would you suggest anyone else go oh, on a trip like this? please go to this one. Uh, or go to mission trips. I, I, as I said, I wasn't really a big fan of mission trips. I didn't think that they did anything. But uh, and this, one, this one in particular felt really meaningful. I mean... We, uh, PUC is adopting this community, and we're planning on coming back as much as we can. And the way that they have opened their hearts, like we are family to them, it's just, it's, it brings you back to people. It's a community now that we, as PUC, are wanting to be a part of. And um, I would totally go back again, and it was so impactful. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that you will all consider taking a mission trip, short term, long term, whether you do missions um, as a student missionary or whether you just choose to go with PUC because there's many opportunities. But I hope you consider that in the future. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, so before we get going, I have a couple announcements for you guys, um, really quick. So this is Week of Worship, welcome again. Uh, we're so excited to have you here. We have an awesome speaker for you guys. Um, we will be meeting here in the church, 1030 from Monday through Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we will meet here again at 10 in the morning. So make sure you are aware of that small schedule change. Uh, and then again on Friday, we will meet here at 1030. So don't miss out. Because tomorrow, after week of worship, we actually have ice cream. So don't miss that. You have to be here. Um, come get uh, worship credit, and you can get some ice cream afterwards. And then on Thursday, we will also have another fun little snack. We'll have boba for you guys. Um, so you can't miss that. Come to week of worship. Come hear an awesome message and get a fun snack. And those are our announcements. Hi guys, I'm Nat. And I'm Eden. Um, and we have a fun little icebreaker for you guys, so if we could get four volunteers. Three more. One more. Come on, guys, there might be a prize. I'm going to start calling names. Call Aiden. Aiden, come here. Thank you very much. Okay, so everybody take a spoon. And then we have eggs. Okay. 
Okay, so basically, you guys are gonna start right here at this line on the floor, and you're gonna race each other down to the end of the pews and back. Um, and for this first round, you guys can just walk. Go. Walk, walk, walk. <laughs> oh, speedy walkers. All right, now line up on the starting line again. This time, we're gonna do lunges. Three, two, one, go. Oh, some, oh, we're one down. Might be doing elimination, but I still think you did awesome. A for effort, A for effort. You went all Woohoo, look at them go. Oh, lower. Oh. Lower. <laughs> Get that workout in, oh, you guys. One down. Oh. We lost one. Oh. Yep. That's all right. It's going to get a lot harder. Okay. <laughs> Aiden, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 we're shaking. Slow and steady runs the race, Aiden, it's okay. All right, now line up again in the starting line. And in three seconds, yeah, you can just go for it. We'll see how many people can outlive this one. Um, now start skipping. <laughs> go for it. Oh, wow. Wow, this is, well. this is smooth. Wow. Look at, oh, oh Aiden, no, oh, oh, we oh. lost two. Oh, oh. Three. oh. This is amazing. That's like some good Thank technique. You. He's like swirling He's got with it. it. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. Uh. All right. Thank you, guys. You are the winner, right? Here we yeah. go. I'll just kind of Oh, yeah. It. You can stop by the office for your prize. Testing one. Oh, hello, guys. So I have a Bible verse for you this morning. Um, if you would like, please turn with me to Genesis 28, 16. And it reads, When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our week of prayer speaker. Her name is uh, Pastor Josie Asensio. And she is the lead pastor of the Antioch SDA Church. Pastor Josie has been a foster parent, is a trained chaplain, a doctoral student, and someone who enjoys going on adventures. She has gone skydiving, cliff diving, scuba diving, and loves Disneyland. I mean, who doesn't? Please welcome her to the stage with a hand. Thank you, Alice. I want to give a special shout out to your religious VP, Ashley Castro Rodriguez. Um, I've just, I remember when you first accepted and um, I've just heard such wonderful things about you. So thank you for letting God use you um, and for all the hard work you've done your sophomore year. It's pretty impressive. You guys, I'm so excited to be here. You know, I spent the night in the dorm room last night 
And um, Winning Hall was the first dorm room that I ever had. Um, I, I then came to my senses and I moved to Groff where all the loud girls were and we had tons of fun. Um, winning was a little quiet for me and um, you know, it was just, it, was, it, it brought back a lot of memories being in the dorm room again. Um, I'm glad to be here and um, I thought when we talk about revival, um, what is to revive? So to revive, I, I always associate with, um, with bringing something back from the dead. And death doesn't necessarily mean that you stop breathing. I don't know about any of you, but I have had some difficult times in my own life where I have felt as if God could not hear me. And when I think about what life really is, it says in the book of Genesis that God made humanity, God made man, and then once he created this beautiful art form, God was a sculptor. I, I'm from the beach, and so people on the beach would often sculpt these beautiful sculptures out of sand. And God sculpted man, and then he breathed into him. And that's life. And I've had moments in my life where I've wondered um, if God's even there, if he hears me, if he cares. And so I want to take us through this week a, a series of spaces where it makes absolute sense for people to feel that exact same feeling. So as we begin today, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Dear God, we ask that you would revive us today. Open our minds to your teaching, our eyes to see you working all around us, our ears to hear your voice, our hearts to your love, and our souls, God. Speak to our souls, we pray. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen and amen. So I am in Genesis chapter 28, and let me tell you a little bit more about what is happening in Genesis chapter um, 27. We meet Jacob. You, you've heard the, the um, reference, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. So this is the story of Jacob, the person that one of the three, the top three that God uses to describe himself. God describes himself in relationship to Jacob. Now let me tell you, Jacob was a mess. He was selfish. He was arrogant. He deceived his own father to steal his brother's uh, blessing inheritance. He was out for himself. It got so bad to the point where his father had lost his eyesight and his father was close to death and his mother's prompting told him to go into his dad's room and pretend to be his brother so he could steal the blessing of the older brother. And that's exactly what he did. He lied to his father, who was blind, who was near his deathbed, and then stole his brother's blessing. And, 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 and the thing is, is Jacob still lived in the household. They still had meals together after all of this happened. They still had to do life together, the whole family. And so tension in the home was really high. He stole something. He tricked his father. He brought shame on the family because he was so selfish. His brother got so mad at him that he whispered under his voice, I am going to kill him as soon as my father dies. His mother finds out, sends him off, and quickly says, hey, Jacob, it's time to go. You've got to get out of here. Go to my brother Laban. They get, they get dad's blessing as if it was dad that told him to go. Dad says, no, go and, and marry someone uh, close to our, our, our family um, over where your mother's brother lives. Find someone there to marry. So Jacob rushes off. That was his last goodbye to his father. And now he is in the middle of nowhere in chapter 28. The expanse of a desert. If you've never been to a desert, um, I'm always scared that there's snakes or lizards or um, 
you know, creatures that are going to kill me at night. <laughs> because there are. <laughs> and he didn't have a tent. What he did is he literally laid on the floor, exhausted. He went as far as he could go. And when the sun had set and he couldn't walk anymore, he takes a stone, uses it as a pillow, and he falls asleep. He's all alone. His father will soon be dead. His brother might be pursuing him. He never know, he'll, he'll, he doesn't know if he's ever going to see his mother again. And it's in this place that God comes to Jacob. Now, what's really crazy about this whole situation is that Jacob comes from a culture where people are used to gods being in temples. Gods don't come to you. You go to them. You do journeys every year to go and give your sacrifice to the gods so that you can have fruit, so that your, 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 your plants will grow and you'll be able to feed your family and have enough to make extra income or to trade for something that you need. This is what it's like to interact with the gods. You try to appease the gods. The gods don't just bless you out of nothing. But he's in this desert place. And in a dream, God opens his eyes so that he can see that God is at work even in a strange place with no temple. That in the place where you expect God to be absent, God is steadily at work with his army of angels. That's why it's important that we see and remember this, what, when scripture says, and there were angels ascending and descending. Let me, let me open up the scriptures so that, so that we can read this together. It says, at, in his dream, Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place and he stayed there the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. And honestly, I'm sure Jacob didn't know if he was going to make it through the night. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder or a stairwell set up on the earth, and at the top of it, it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels were ascending and they were descending on it. And behold, look who stood at the very top. It was the Lord himself. Uh, and he stood above it. And this is what he says to Jacob. I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham. Your father and the God of, of Isaac. And soon after he dies, his name will be added to this list as well. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. So he's gotten himself into a situation where he's in the middle of a desert place. And this desert place could be the place where he loses his very life and finally finds out that actually this place where he's lying has now become his inheritance. What should have been a representation of a cursed life now just became a blessing. Let's read on. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And the one thing I hear from this, if I were Jacob, the one thing that I would hear is I'm not going to die. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have a family. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and the east and the north and the south. And in you, you and your offspring and your families, your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In other words, you and your descendants are going to bless the whole earth. And that's so counterintuitive because Jacob is not a blesser. We just learned right before that Jacob is not a giver of blessings. Jacob is a taker of blessings. 
It is not in Jacob's character to even be able to do this. From the time he was young, he tried to deceive and get things out of scheming. And we're going to learn that even after the blessing, he still continues to scheme. And what I love about this is Jacob isn't perfect. He's messed up. He, he's selfish. And yet God is going to use him to bless the people of the earth. In a space where he should be feeling as if God has abandoned him. And isn't that right? Like when people do us wrong, don't we want them to feel that? No, he stole something from me. He took my stuff. No, this person did me dirty. They took my friends. No, this person's lying and deceiving. He, they, you know, they should feel the absence of the presence of God. And in the very space where he should be punished, do you know what God does? God loves him anyway. When we think about revival, there's one thing that revives. And that's the presence of God. The very breath of God. The very words that God speaks. I'm going to bless you. The place where, you're, where you are, which seems like a desert place where you should die. This place is going to be your inheritance. You're a stealer of blessings. I'm going to make you a giver of blessings. And all the earth will be blessed because you lived. Going down to verse 15, he says, God says this to him. Behold, somebody needs to hear this today. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you and I will keep you. Wherever you go. And I'm going to bring you back to this land, your inheritance. I'm going to skip down to 17. It says, after all this had happened, it says that he was afraid. Here he was far away from the temple. Far away from where anybody should be able to find him. And when he should have been hidden, God came to him and found him anyway. And God didn't come to punish him. God came to bless him. Who is this God? He was afraid. And he said, this place is awesome. This place is the house of God. It's the gateway to heaven. We learn later that he recognizes that it's not the place where God resides, but God resides with his people. If you read the first testament, you'll find over and over again that God says this phrase, then I will be your God and you will be my people. Then I will be your God and you will be my people. Then finally, I will be your God and you will be my people. The one desire that God has for humanity is not for them to be perfect. It's not for them to know and memorize the 27 fundamental beliefs. It is not for them to know the 10 commandments, although that is our basis for our relationship. It's where the relationship relationship with God starts, not where it ends. God just wants to be with you. And so um, oftentimes we don't teach people how to pray. I'm going through this discipleship program with our leadership and my board where I'm teaching them biblical principles and how to connect with God. We're terrible at teaching that. And so I'm going to, in every one of our talks, make sure that we have some time to practice our own opportunities to connect with God. So I'm just going to ask that you would either lower your gaze or that you would close your eyes for just a moment. And I'm going to be silent. And I'm going to ask you for just, just a few moments if you'd get uncomfortable and you just start talking to God, I don't care what you say. You can yell at him. You can cry. You can tell him you need your help. 
but would you start the conversation? Dear God, I just ask that you would continue to be with us. We all have done things that have drawn us further away from you, and sometimes we just don't know how to connect with you. So I ask during this week of worship that we not just worship, but that we also connect with you. Draw us closer to you. You know the pain, uh, you know the need for direction, God, I ask that you would speak to us, that you would revive us again, that you would breathe over us, and that you would cause us to know you more, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, I promise I will not say that. Have a happy Thursday, everyone. You are all dismissed. <laughs>